Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Anton and I will lead today's webinar featuring usage of telephone interconnect in Smart PCT system. At the end of the webinar, I will be glad to answer all the questions you would like to ask. At the end of the webinar, there will be a short survey to have some feedback from you. Please be active and take a part in it. During this webinar, I will take you through the history of PBXs, give you some basic descriptions on glossary and will give you a short example of setting up phone system with Smart PCT. Let's start. The term PBX was first applied when switchboard operators ran company switchboards by hand. As automated electromechanical and then electronic switching systems gradually began to replace the manual systems, the terms PABX, Private Automatic Branch Exchange, and PMBX, Private Manual Branch Exchange, were used to differentiate them. Solid-state digital systems were sometimes referred to as EPABX, Electronic Private Automatic Branch Exchange. Now, the term PBX is by far the most widely recognized. The acronym is now applied to all types of complex in-house telephony switching systems even if they are not private, not branches, or not exchanging anything. An IPPBX is a PBX that provides audio, video, and instant messaging communications through the TCP IP protocol stacks for its internal network and interconnects its internal network with the public switch telephone network for telephony communication. Private switch telephony network is also called PSTN. The protocol used to establish foreign connection over IP is called Session Initiation Protocol, which is SIP. VoIP, Voice over IP protocol, gateways can be combined with traditional PBX functionality enabling businesses to use their managed intranet to help reduce long distance expenses, enjoy the benefits of a single network for voice and data and advanced CTI features or be used on a pure IP system which is in most cases uh, give greater cost savings, greater mobility and increased redundancy. An IPPBX can exist as a hardware object or virtually as a software system. Well-known software PBX systems are Asterisk and 3CX. This software can run on PC performing all functions of casual hardware PBX. As a phone system, PBX can connect simultaneously to different subsystems and gateways. For example, it can connect to another PBX, to PSTN by means of VoIP gateway or through third-party VoIP provider. Also, it can connect to a number of IP phones and software IP phones called soft phones. In such a complicated system, a question arises. How does user specify the call destination? For example, we have two different SIP phones in two different systems with internal number of 1000. That means, if we want to call these phones from inside of our PBX, we need to specify somehow where we suppose this call to end. This is why prefixes are implemented and widely used. So they form the basis of every PBX system. In this example system, we have two external subsystems, web gateway and a web provider. Let's suppose that to call behind web provider, user must begin his or her call with 31, and to call behind web gateway, 80. This way, when user wants to call SIP phone 1000 behind web gateway, he or she calls 80, 10, double zero. which is prefix followed by number of SIP phone. Upon receiving such a call, PBX compares number to be called with its set of prefixes and first prefix to match will be used. Knowing that this prefix leads to preset VoIP gateway with known IP address, PBX reroutes this call there. Gateway reroutes call further into its own network and finds subscriber 1000 to be called. Interconnection established call can proceed with voice data. For web provider, this sequence is totally the same. Call number is becoming 31 10 00 and call lands on the side of web provider. Smart PTT allows connection to existing PBX system to give subscribers of radio network an opportunity to organize and participate in phone calls. 
Common functionality of smart PC TVs telephone interconnect is listed here. First, dispatcher and radio server are configured separately and do not rely on each other in scope of placing calls directly to PBX. Dispatcher can work with PBX even in case of radio server not running. Second, radio server gives phone subscribers the ability to place private calls to specified radio subscriber as well as group calls to specified group with all subscribers of this group participating. Third, Dispatcher has the options to organize conference call based on telephone system. This allows fast organization of voice chat room for all available subscribers, radio, phone, dispatchers, groups, talking simultaneously. Fourth, radio subscriber can initialize a call in three different ways. Call phone subscriber directly with DTMF tones if radio is equipped with KPAD. In this case, radio subscriber first presses PTT and enters access code via DTMF. Then he or she enters phone subscriber number. Upon releasing PTT, phone call will be placed. Second variant is selecting phone subscriber from contact list and subscriber unit will make a call automatically. And the last one is sending a text message consisting of special prefix followed by number of phone subscriber. Radio server will receive this message and will instantly and automatically make outgoing call to radio subscriber and to phone subscriber simultaneously. This option is useful in topologies where telephone system is not supported natively, such as capacity plus or control stations. Worth mentioning that system can handle one phone call per slot or control station. It means that each phone call takes a slot in the system as any other call. Thus, in IP side connect system, only two phone calls can take place simultaneously. This is main limitation of phone interconnection. It takes the same channel as radio calls. To make things clear, let's take an example of setting up phone system for smart PTT step by step. Mostly, some system organization information will not be given and needs to be figured out or requested from VoIP provider. In this case, we will presume that all needed information is known. This way we're supposed to know IP addresses map of the network. Here a network is supposed to be organized in 192.168.1.x segment of IP network. Addresses will be shortening out the identical beginning 100 for dispatcher, 50 for radio server, 10 for PBX and 5 for phone. SIP numbers assigned to be used by phones and dispatcher. As radio server and PBX are spread system, they do not have their own SIP numbers. Dispatcher has number 100 and phone 300. Prefixes to be used in organized system represent the system structure. To make calls from dispatcher to PBX, user must start call with 10. To make calls from radio server with 11. To call from PBX network to dispatcher, phone user must begin call with 30. To make private call from PBX to radio server subscriber, dialed number must begin with 21. And to place a group call, 22. These settings can be optional. If there is no need to use outgoing prefixes, they can be omitted. The process of setting up the system is complex. Let's proceed step by step. First of all, let's see CPS settings. CPS settings are needed only in case of IP side connect. In case of control stations or capacity plus systems, there is no need in this. For IP side connect and CPS of every subscriber radio, it is obligatory to set up the phone system under signal and system options. Gateway ID should match peer ID of radio server for this IP side connect system. Also, access and deaccess codes must be set for correct functioning of system. In this case, asterisk 1 and pound are used and as access and access codes. Second critical setting is selecting usage of phone system for each channel. Each channel has individual setting for used phone system. That allows user to select different phone systems for different sites or different IP site connect systems. That's all that needs to be set up in CPS. Let's proceed with radio server settings. Smart PTT radio server is very flexible in settings and can connect to virtually any existing VoIP phone network. For this example, settings must be as following. 
Main settings are under Telephone Interconnect header. Active checkbox set to allow telephone interconnection. Interface is set to IP address of radio server which is 192.168.1.50. C port is 5060 as no programs on this PC are using this port. RTP ports remain default. Transport is UDP. Incoming call settings are Private call mask is 21. Group call mask is 22, as predefined in the task. Authentication is not used. Private calls must be confirmed. Group calls will go without confirmation. Settings for outgoing calls allow user to use gateway to place outgoing calls. Interface and port IP and port used by PBX. Destination mask is prefix for outgoing calls. It must be set from set to 11 from task description. TMS prefix will allow radio subscribers to initiate phone calls by sending text messages beginning with letter T and continuing with phone numbers that subscribers want to call. Telephone interconnect settings tab mentions some compatibility and control options for phone connection. Access and deaccess codes must be set up here in, the, in conformity with CPS settings, that is why they are set to be asterisk 1 and pound respectively. As for CPS settings, for radio server it is also obligatory to enable telephone interconnection on per slot basis. It defines which slots in the system will grant radio subscribers access to phone network. This covers all settings for radio server and we can proceed with dispatcher software settings. Dispatcher software setup is quite the same as radio server. User must allow phone calls to be used select transport UDP in this case, and specify interface and ports. Specific settings are phone number, which is number of dispatcher to call from phone network, and dispatcher name that will be shown on display of SIP phone when dispatcher is calling it. Prefixes for outgoing and incoming calls are defined by the task. VoIP gateway address and port are the same as for radio server. This is all for dispatcher. We are moving on to the phone system itself. As phone system settings are quite different for different phone systems, here will be mentioned only the main settings that should be made in phone system. Of course, it should reside on 192.168.1.10 IP address. Prefixes must be set in such way that calls beginning with 30 are redirected to dispatcher and calls beginning with 2 are rerouted to radio server. PBX must accept incoming calls from both radio server and dispatcher IP. Also, for each phone in the system, there should be a special entry called extension, which gives opportunity to call individual phone subscribers. In our case, the extension should be made for phone at IP address 192.168.1.5 with local number 300. System configured in such way will function as following. To call to phone from dispatcher, dispatcher must enter number 10300. And radio subscriber must call 11300. Phone user calling dispatcher using, uses number 20100. When calling individual radio, for example, 200, phone user must call 21, 200. To call group 5, for example, phone user must call 22, 5. This example shows how complex even the smallest system can be. A lot of effort is needed to correctly organize phone system in such way that it will be convenient for every subscriber. That's everything about Telephone Interconnect that you need to know to set up your own local phone system. Visit our website smartptc.com to find out more information about SmartPTT software. Check out our new technical support portal on support.smartptc.com. You can submit your request there and receive fast and professional help. And also view a lot of data on our knowledge base and about 
uh, frequently asked questions.